Hey, what's good, y'all? It's your boy JD6 here with my man. Shout out to KC Sports Authority. Make sure y'all go check that podcast out, man. You heard the man. And welcome into another episode of the KC Sports Authority podcast. You can check our podcast out over on Spotify if you like to listen on the go. You can also check us out right here over on YouTube where you can watch and subscribe to our show. On our way to 500 subscribers, you've been hearing me talk about it for a week now. Would love your guys' support. We are slowly inching there, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now. A lot of great content coming this spring that you don't want to miss out. And the best way to stay up to date with all that is to hit that subscribe button so you can get notified when the next latest content drops. You can also hit us up on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at KCSA Pod. Well, Chris, it is a uh, baseball season and a week and a half in. We've got a winning ball club here in Kansas City. What do you say? Dude, it's crazy. You know, I, again, we'll say this. I don't know how many times this episode. It's only 10 games. Yes, four of them were against the White Sox. But you would rather be playing winning baseball than losing baseball. And there's a lot of reasons to be excited, man. It's been awesome. 100%. The Royals, I didn't, I didn't verify this beforehand, so I'm not going to throw out a date and be wrong. But the Royals have not started out six and four in in a couple years now. Twenty twenty one. Yep. And not that that season went how we were gonna hoping it would. But right now the Royals are on pace for ninety seven wins <laughs> through yeah, ten that. games. <laughs> Obviously that pace is gonna slow. But man, the boys look pretty decent uh, to start off the year. We're gonna get into some of the statistics and, and you know, talk about some of the the team stats, individual stats. Obviously, the starters to the bullpen. I think the bullpen's really been the the biggest question mark still so far early on. Uh, a couple better outings, and maybe we're sitting here seven and three, eight and two. A um, couple questions, you know, in the lineup. But all in all, there's really not been much to complain about. Um, what's really stood out the most to you in this first week and a half? Let's just start with it. Like, it's the thing everyone's talking about, whether it's a national baseball show, local, whatever. It's the starting rotation. The starting rotation has been incredible. You know, even with Marsh, I, it, like people are talking about Marsh's last start against the White Sox as a bad start. It's like if you get four and two thirds of three run ball from your five guy who may have not supposed to have been in the rotation, like that's pretty good in today's baseball. Now, maybe if it was 1988, okay, that's not the best start, but. Today's baseball, that amount of innings from your fifth starter is good. Everyone else has been lights out. Eight quality starts through 10 games. like Which is I, tied for the top in the major league right now. Yeah, it is, it's probably with the Red Sox who have also mm-hmm. been going well. But like second in ERA behind those Red Sox, uh, like sec, third in strikeouts, third in home runs allowed. Like they have just been on another level. And I think what my favorite part of this is like, yeah, we can sit here and dive into the numbers. You know, Reagan's looks like Cy Young stuff. Singer looks like he's back to 2022 form. Waka and Lugo bring a lot of experience. But how much they just enjoy being around each other. I mean, it's yeah. like every game, they whenever they come off the – whenever a Q will take them out, you see all five of them huddled in the, in the dugout talking about the start, talking about what they saw, like – that's so cool to me because those are the things that those are the little things in a long, grueling baseball season that matter. Like we talk about team chemistry a lot in a lot of sports. And I, I'm sure like, you know, we know Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey's chemistry is what helps makes them so great. There's there's instances of that. But it's even more so in baseball because you're around these guys for every single day for 162 games a season like to already have that kind of a knit group with basically a new group. You know, Reagan's was only here for a couple months. Walk and Lugo's new. Marsh has been up and down last year. Singer's the only one with really any Royals experience, and yet they're all acting like they've been in growing, coming up in the system together. That's my favorite part so far of watching these starters. Yeah, and you always hear managers say it, but that, that energy is contagious. Like mm-hmm. baseball is one of those sports where it's so easy to let a one bad game turn into two to three to four. Next thing you know, you're you've lost eight out of ten. And and these guys, they definitely look like they enjoy playing with each other. You know, Josh Vernier mentioned that quite a bit just through spring training, just seeing how this is a bunch of new faces in a ball club, and it usually takes time to gel. They said like they've looked like a team right away. You know, obviously you've got your energy leader in Salvi all the time that's always fired up. But this this group has has enjoyed playing together. And it kind of takes me back to uh one, we've talked about this throughout the whole KU basketball season that those guys just didn't look like they enjoyed 
playing the game together, whether they enjoyed the game or not. It just the the energy out there was, was not there. And I think back to a couple of years ago, I love Whit Merrifield, one of my favorite Royals players of all time. But you could tell during the year before he got traded that that team was very much broken apart of new guys who didn't know what to how to win older guys who have seen winning, but were so frustrated with the way the game was going that there was just no continuity across that group um, really in any position group. And now you've got a team where one through nine, you know, the guys are so excited for each other. The team is so gelled together that a guy like Vinny Pasquantino, who we've said has to have a big season for this team to really go deep, hasn't really shown up yet. And it's not really a big concern, which of course we'll get into some of the, the guys in that lineup, but you look top to bottom on this roster right now. They look like they're having fun. Even a guy in Will Smith who has definitely struggled to start the year um, considering the expectations that everyone has on him. He's already owned up to, you know, his failures and he, even himself, he's not checked out. He's not shutting the door on it. He's not, you know, gotten down, down and bummed out that he's not helping his team win. He said, it's like, Hey, what do you need me to do? I've screwed up. You want me to change roles? Okay, great. I'll come out and pitch the eighth inning. Still struggle, but I'll come out and pitch the eighth inning and, and do something different because it's about making the team better. And I think yeah. I think you just nailed it there. That's just the start to this season so far, six and four. I feel like even if we were losing games and we were like four and six, three and seven, you would be able to see that the energy is there and that guys enjoy playing. Now, obviously winning always, always helps. Winning cures all. Uh, but yeah, so far through 10 games, there's really not much we can sit here and complain about. Yeah, and they've been in all 10 games. You know, they've had a, I, I think it's a set that's been going around to where they've been uh, leading tight or down by one in the eighth inning or of every single game so far, which again, 10 games. But like, that's, you haven't had to sit through a stinker yet. It's kept you inter- interested in all nine innings. So that's a plus. And I jumping back to the starters, because again, that is where the story is with the, I mean, it was a story this off season, like when they brought in Lugo, I thought that was it, you know? Um, and then they, they go out and sign walk. And I was like, Whoa, that's, that's not like the Royals to spend money on two starters. And then I thought that it was Lyle's spot. You know, that's mm-hmm. what I've been grown. That's what I've grown up on is, Hey, we're paying this guy. We like the four ahead of him, So it makes sense to the guy we're paying to be the fifth starter. Like that's just how the Royals have been. I mean, hell, Lyles would be the two a lot of years in the past. But no, Marsh came out and balled, and they were like, sorry, Lyles, I know that you're the fifth highest paid player on the roster or whatever he is. You're going to the bullpen. Like, this kid out, outperformed you. And Marsh rewards them with a great start in Baltimore and a decent start mm-hmm. in start two. So, like, that move's looking good. This team wants to win. And again, back to the team chemistry thing. There's, I hate to break it to all of you that there is going to be a start where, like, Lugo goes out there and it's going to be three innings or six earned or, you know, where Brady just doesn't have his command and he's at 80 pitches through three and a third or whatever. And they're going to come out early. Like, but they have the support system in the dugout. Like that's going to, you know, how many Waka, a world series champ, a guy who's well-respected and been in this league for a long time. He's going to come off the mound and, and talk, you know, be able to talk to these kids and tell them what happened and, and, go through what happened and Lugo himself, he knows the ups and downs. Lugo and Waka themselves know the ups and downs. So when they have those kind of starts, they're going to have a mature enough to not let it snowball to be like, let's get past it. This is what I did wrong. Like that kind of stuff is so awesome. And I, I I hope it's how this season goes because that's what it looks like through the small sample size and like injuries, which are going to have, that's the only thing I see really slowing this rotation down to where you don't have a chance every day. Yeah, the rotation has been fantastic. Like you said, they're the number two uh, pitching staff in baseball right now with the second lowest ERA. They've tied for the league's most quality starts at eight. I think they're, what, top three in strikeouts from Mm -hmm. a, I think, just starting pitching staff. Um, You've got two guys that it feels like are going to get you five-plus strikeouts every single night no matter what. Uh, Brady Singer looks like he's back to that early form we saw where he was dominant for about a four-month stretch of the season. Um, Cole Reagans, man, he's nasty. Oh, so I'm sure, and I'm sure he might. He's going to have a bad start or two along the way somewhere. That's going to happen. It's baseball, right. but man, he's. Uh, if you guys saw that little short I kicked out a while back from uh, the last Royals episode we talked about, where we were talking about Cole Reagans potentially competing for the the AL Cy Young and. Through his first first couple starts, he he's making a case. 
Right. And the Royals don't even have a win in one of his starts yet. That's what's crazy is he got outdueled by Pablo Lopez in opening day. And then and still had nine strikeouts, by the he way. He outdueled Corbin Burns, but bullpen gave that one away late. And now, so those that's an AL Central winner from 2023, the AL East winner from 2023. Now his next start's going against the Astros, the AL West. So he's he's doing it against the teams. And so, like, to, to come out, if he comes out tomorrow or today, probably when you're watching this on Tuesday, and just deals against the Astros, which I know they've had some lineup issues, but that's still a lineup with – Jose Altuve, Alex Bregman, Kyle Tucker, Jordan Alvarez literally hit like a lot of mashers, fifty foot homer two seconds before we started recording. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> like, like there's a lot of guys that can get hot and that are proven in that Astros lineup. And if Reagans can do it again to start against the best teams in the American League, like look out. And we already know this in Kansas City. Like he's been the talk of the town basically since September started of last year, but. He is uh, throwing 98, punching guys out. Like, he's he's the most fun. As much as I love Brady Singer, who's, like, my favorite Royal since Gordo retired, as much as I love Brady, like, there's just watching Cole Reagans has just been otherworldly these last few, com- last few yeah. games. And just to put some perspective on as far as how good the, the starters have been, you know, a lot of pitching is really based on not just strikeouts, but how many guys do you give a free pass to? Mm-hmm. And so far for the five starters, we've got Reagan says he has a couple more than you'd probably like to see in his his two outings, but gonna have five, 10, tough, 12, though. 14 walks through the first full two rotations through versus a guy like Will Smith who's only pitched four innings and has five walks already. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that just right there shows you that this this pitching staff is dialed in. They've, they're, they're locked in. Um, Reagan's has been working on multiple pitches, not just coming in with the standard three pitches that a lot of starters have. He's kind of got a four to five pitch blend. Now, even guys like Michael walk and Seth Lugo, you can just see that they've, they've really honed in their craft to start the year. Two fantastic additions to this rotation that are going to be solid anchors in there um, for when guys like Reagan's and singers have some up and down moments because they're still young. They're still learning Reagan's each time he pitches, there's going to be more tape on them for teams to kind of break down and start to, you know, tweak their, their approach. But yeah, so far you've been, you've been pretty pleased with what you've seen, I guess, outside of, of Reagan's of those other guys, who's really stood out the most to you or impressed you the most or surprised you the most. Dude, I could say it's something about all four of them. Like that's just where they're at. Like, like Lugo's just, he gave up a lot of, a lot of contact to the, to the um, white Sox in his second start. Didn't let it phase him. Let the defense work behind him. Turned like three double plays just behind Lugo alone. Um, he his com- his composure was great. Waka's changeup against the White Sox was just absolutely filthy. I mean, it was the most disgusting eighty two mile per hour pitch you'll see. <laughs> like, and then the the thing to be encouraging about Brady is is the four seamer. Like, so he throws the sinker slider, and those have been elite basically since he debuted in twenty twenty. But those that's all he's had, and he's been scared to throw that third pitch. It's normally been the changeup. He's starting to go away from the changeup a little bit. And is used just a straight four seamer, which doesn't sound like much, but it doesn't have that break. And you know, and you when you've seen the sinker breaking in like that so many times, having something stay straight is is a different look for the hitters and with a similar velocity. So that's been huge. He's also thrown, I think, three sweepers, uh, six total in his two starts. Um, so that's kind of interesting to see. Um, I have I don't have a real good feel for it just because he's thrown it so few times, but. Um, it, it, that's encouraging. And then, uh, Marsh, like, again, just go out there and, and, and the seven innings, you know, the, the overlying stats, if you want to nerd out on the seven innings of shutout ball in Baltimore, there was a little bit of weather slash luck in that. Like if, we, but still you got to do it. And he did a pretty good job. He gave up some weak contact against the white Sox. I know I'm kind of rambling at this point, but like, there's just so much to be encouraged by everyone's start for a different reason based on expectations. Yeah. I think Singer's the one that pops off to me just because we've, we've said before that he needs to have a much stronger year this year for us to compete. Um, yes. You bring in Waka and Lugo, those experienced veterans that are certainly capable of leading a pitching staff, but you need a guy like Brady who's got the electric stuff when he's locked in to, to really, you know, carry himself this year and i think through through two starts i really honestly think that second start he probably could have gone deeper Mm -hmm. um i thought q kind of pulled him early that six and a third he was only at like 70 pitches at that point um but i think they were trying to get get into the bullpen and kind of try to play the the 
strategy game there of diff- different pitches, different looks as they were working through the lineup again. It's um, one of those yeah, things with the, Reigns, with the Rays mindset, which I have my own feelings about, but that's what Matt Cotrero brings coming from the Rays. And Gavin Sheets had already taken Brady deep. And so the pitch cow didn't really matter as much. It was this guy, what's one swing of the bat could change the game. Um, this is your third time facing him. Let's take you out. So that you're going to see that kind of stuff. And you've seen it a lot with the way the lineups have been constructed, with the way it feels like everyone on the bench plays in every single game. That's just kind of that's just kind of that Ray mindset. So that's what's going to. Yeah. And you were coming off of a blowout win the night before where you didn't really tax the bullpen much at all. Right. So, you yeah, get a, get a fresh arm out there. Yeah. But yeah, I think Singer's been fantastic. If he can, you know, hover around, give you that on average. I mean, if he can give you a quality start two out of every three. That's a lot to ask. Still. Through, um, five and a half innings six innings two run ball less which he's certainly capable of and now i think he's got the stuff that if you do make contact with that four seam where you're going to drive it um but that's just about any pitcher if you can make right. contact at the right time you're sending yeah. that ball which leads me into a guy who's making a lot of contact and showing some power surprising power early on that's michael garcia uh he's a guy that i felt coming into this year was going to be incredibly undervalued nationally Mm-hmm. Um, I think we saw glimpses and spurts last year of his superstar capabilities, uh, but a guy that was just super consistent, um, a guy you can s- stuff up there at the top of your batting order, know he's going to get on base two at least two times every game. He's come out on fire, you know, opening day leadoff home run. He's got three home runs already. He's about to sur- – he's going to absolutely crush his his home run total from last year unless he just has some sort of weird um, – where he doesn't drive the ball. But I think just watching him swing the ball this year, um, I think it was uh, – I want to say it was Ryan Lefevre that said it during one of the broadcasts that mentioned if he can just – if he just gets a tiny bit under – you know, he's going to, he's got a lot of driving capabilities. Mm-hmm. So I think we've seen that already. So I think Michael Garcia has been to me, one of the offensive standouts. Obviously there's quite a few in this lineup we can get into, but what have you seen from Michael that has you confident that he could potentially be that kind of all-star caliber third baseman? He took like the speed course so far on learning how to uh, lift the ball on, on his launch angle. And again, we're getting kind of nerdy with that, but like last year he was one of the best at hitting the ball hard, which, it doesn't take a genius to know you hit the ball harder, like better things are probably going to happen. But if you hit on the ground, it's going to be tough. He's early on is now lifting it. And so that he's hitting it with the same velocity as he was last year, but he's hitting it in the air, allowing it to go to the gaps, allowing it to go over the wall. So if he can maintain that and he really did find something in his swing, allowing him to do that, he's going to be a 20 home run guy. <laughs> like that's going to play elite level defense. Like he's, I, I call it, he's going to be Robin to, uh, Bobby's Batman, but yeah. like there's another guy that's also putting his his hat in the case for that as well. Um, so this Michael's been awesome. I, I hope he keeps lifting it again. For those of you that don't know, he, his cousins are Alcides Escobar and uh, Acuna uh, for the Braves. So he does have a lot of that uh, baseball talent in the family. So there's no reason to doubt this guy's going to figure it out. Yeah, that pairing of him and Bobby Witt at the top. I don't know where you rank that across baseball altogether, but that, that right. shortstop and third spot has got to be one of the three best in the American League, maybe, as far as most consistent, most reliable um, that you feel the best with. He's not, you know, they're not going to drive in 65 homers combined like a couple other teams might do. Uh, but those two together, they just, I mean, it's just a, you don't even have to think about it. They're both so solid defensively. They're both swinging the bat really well. They get, they're a good pairing at that one, two spot. Now, Garcia's in a slump the last three games, I guess. He's kind of cooled off there. But he's a guy that he's going to get on base. He's going to find ways to, to get to second. Um, him and Bobby there at the top, it's almost a guaranteed one of them's uh, in the first innings going to gonna get on base. Uh, Bobby, of course, you know he started out pretty well. He was, what, top five in like every batting metric you could find the first week as far as you know spin rate hard hit rate you know right, uh, right. drive all these different numbers bobby was right there and of course you know as the games have un- unraveled there's been more more guys stepping up there but bobby's also looked really good i think he's gonna again make a strong case for for what he's capable of batting 350 right now through the first week and a half salvi's off to a pretty hot start as well uh, not you know, not just crushing home runs, but he's also driving the ball, moving guys over. Um, MJ Melendez is the one I want to bring up because he's mm-hmm. another one that this offseason could have been a guy that got moved, a guy that struggled this last year, 
I'm still a big proponent of, I think a lot of that was the transition to outfield and trying to learn that at the same time as struggling to bat on the, at the, at the big league level uh, comes off of uh, the all-star break last year, has some time off, gets kind of resituated, looked pretty, pretty solid down the stretch, got better, but he was a guy too coming into this year that if he was still around, uh, there were going to be a lot of questions of, could he be that middle of the order type bat? Does he have that potential? He's shown the power there, um, but also need to show a lot more plate discipline. He's off to a pretty hot start himself. What have you seen from him so far that has you encouraged yeah, I mean, he's put about now 70 consecutive games of an 850 OPS guy, which basically is just a, is an all-star level for those of you that don't necessarily care about OPS. Like he's been he's been playing for well, he's playing well for a while now and he's kind of carried over how he finished last year into the start of this year and he's just playing with so much confidence. It's like I I think like to your point, the defensive switch, they didn't tell him. He was still he reported with pitchers and catchers mm-hmm. in 2023. Like he reported that early because he was still under the impression he was going to play some sort of catcher or some level of catcher. And then halfway through spring, they were like, actually, no, you're just going to play the outfield, like get ready to learn right field and go. Like that's a lot for a young kid who's already coming off his rookie year with mixed results. I think he had, you know, for a rookie, he had 18 homers and had a promising year. But instead of being able to grow on that, he was forced to play in a very spacious outfield, something he's never done before on a bad team. Like, so not only are you, is the team losing, not only is your defensive metrics terrible, but now you also have to focus on trying to not swing too hard at the play and, and be locked in every at bat. That's really hard for a 24 year old kid to do. And I think we're seeing that he's finally let some of that go. Let some of the, uh, you know, defensive stuff. I think he's settled in. I'm almost at the point to where I'm kind of irritated when Q takes him out for Garrett Hampson late in yeah, the, the swap. And like, I get it. Hampson is a better defender. That is, that is no question about that, that him and Blanco cover way more ground than MJ, but MJ has a good arm and his bat is, unless it's like five, one, you know, if it's a three, two game, I don't necessarily want MJ out because something happens. I want MJ's bat in for, for later in the game kind of ordeal. So uh, that's where he's at defensively, just because his arm is a weapon when he gets to the balls. Like, there's just so much to like about what we've seen from him in the clutch, man. Like, you you can't get better than the what he's been clutch wise. Yeah. Three straight games, and the best, yeah, sure. The two homers on Sunday and the homer, the one, the go ahead homer on Sunday and the go ahead homer on Saturday. Those are great. Those are electric. He's bat flipping. He's got the passion. The way he on Friday night was able to slow everything down realize that a base hit ties this game i do not need keep it simple defense. that's the most encouraging thing he, he looked at the scoreboard looked at the the base runners and was like what can help my team here and a, a lousy single is all you do and that's what he did and the rules when they like it's just i feel like i've been rambling about everything you've asked me about so far but that's just because there's been so much positive on the topics that we've gone over that like it's hard not to be excited. That's why I have to keep saying it's only ten games, or forty of them. <laughs> yeah, how long? How long can we keep it up? That's, forty. That's yeah, forty percent of them were against maybe the worst team in baseball. Like yeah. that's all. I I got that all in perspective. But again, you would rather see it happen than not happen. And this is the data we have to yeah. deal with, especially early in the season. You want to get off right. to a good start. You want to be able to feel comfortable. Uh, that this these guys can go out and compete and they're having fun doing it just like you mentioned the chemistry is there mm-hmm. obviously they're going to get some bigger tests coming up here with, with some better ball clubs on the schedule uh, but yeah i think i think melinda is if he can if he can string together like another two or three month stretch of what he's doing now you're going to feel real good for the next couple of years that he can lock down that outfield spot and be a be a relied upon bat in the middle of the order um, especially as he continues to build confidence and consistency. Um, let's look through a cr- as we kind of slowly wrap up here as we're looking through some of the other guys here. You don't want to spend too much time. We're going to try and do this at least once a week, kind of give you guys a, a good recap of what we're seeing or as, as stuff breaks, big stuff, you know, maybe some weeks it's every two weeks, every five or six, seven, eight games. We'll see. But we just kind of want to just every so often dive into what we're seeing from the ball club. Um, and, and of course it's more fun to talk about the Royals when they're, when they're playing well right. and winning. Um, but one, I guess, question mark, so to speak, or I guess two, there's really only two guys that I'm worried about in the lineup so far that haven't done much yet. And that's of course, Vinny coming back from his surgery and then the acquisition of Hunter Renfro in the off season, both those guys at the plate at least have really not done much 
been a slow start. I know you told me as we were talking about early season predictions that you kind of thought Vinny would get off to a slow start. I guess my, my thing I was going to say is it's nice to see that the slow starts from the two of them haven't really impacted the ball club as a whole just yet. Um, but how concerned are you so far first 10 games into the season about those two? What do you need to see from them to kind of ease into the season better? I'm not really worried about either of them. And I know that that, as some people probably freaking out, but like Vinny up until Saturday's game, the first eight games that he played, I thought his at bats looked pretty normal. You know, he's, he's a guy that is not going to strike out a lot. And going into Saturday's game, he had still more walks and strikeouts. Mm -hmm. He had hit, he hadn't been lifting the ball. So he's been ground out a little bit. A guy like him can't, can't be doing that but his at bats looked normal enough you know there was a there was like man one one line drive to the gap and Vinny's fix kind of ordeal yep then saturday you kind of felt like okay he was gripping a little tight like he i think he struck out twice he took some really ugly swings like he was just pressing he wanted to be in that moment so i that was the first red flag was saturdays but he sat out sunday he gets monday off We'll see what he looks like against the Astros. Now, Christian Javier goes Tuesday, who's a very talented pitcher. But the next two guys, Hunter Brown and, and JP France, are not elite starters. So, like, if any can, you know, get things going in these Astros series against, especially those two, the Wednesday and Thursday night starters, then we'll start looking up. But if he continues to struggle, I'm not in the proponent of like some people want him down in triple A already. He's called Prado. <laughs> I've seen like, and I'm like, that's crazy. It's just because Prado's raking this. Start right, here. right. But that's still crazy yeah. to me because Prado has proved that he can't hit major league pitching while Vinny's put together 80 games of being able to hit major league pitching. Yeah. And again, he's coming off of a major surgery where he missed half the year, didn't really right. get to do any rehab till late. So he's still getting back in the swing of things. Right. And so maybe he's dropping down the order, put Melendez in the three hole put Vinny down in that five six spot like that that's something that should happen sooner if he continues to struggle but I still don't mind him like if he's if he's in the three hole uh the rest of the home series and then on the six game road trip to New York and Chicago I will be okay with that now if he's still hitting a buck 20 by the time they come back home and play the Orioles and the and the Blue Jays then it may be time especially if MJ's still crushing to move him down in yeah. the lineup but I still got another week and a half of watching Vinny try to get things together in that three hole. Yeah. And I think they're the semi encouraging thing is that you said, yeah, the stri the strikeouts aren't high right now. He leads the team and walks at four. I think the big thing with Vinny is I'm okay. If, you know, if he's going one for four striking out twice, as long as when a guy's in scoring position, he's doing what he should be doing and mm -hmm. getting the guy home. Um, so Vinny can come up and have kind of like what Melendez has been doing the last couple of days. If Vinny is finding himself in those spots, that's when he can't really, he can't be batting 120 to 200 right. with guys in scoring position with a chance to impact the team. Same for a guy like Hunter Renfro. Renfro, I think my big thing there is just the strikeouts. He's got 10 already, just hasn't really gotten it together. Only one walk. Again, week and a half in. He's a veteran. I'm not worried about him. But if those two guys can just, get things going here soon. It just makes you feel so much more comfortable with that one through nine lineup. Cause the rest of the guys are really, even the guys that you don't expect a lot of, you know, the Adam Frazier's of the world, uh, Freddie for to an extent. I know Garrett Hampson hasn't really had a lot of time, Nick Lofton either. Um, but if, if one through seven are doing their, their part, the eight and nine spot, you're not, you're not too worried about. Yeah, Nelson Velasquez doing his thing after a terrible spring has really saved this land. It's yeah. not getting talked about a lot because it is more fun to talk about that one through five because it's players that we had expectations for. But Nelson has done a really nice job in that DH slash left field spot of uh, being a being a threat. You know, he's going to strike out a lot. Like that's just kind of his thing. But also, he's uh, he's walked a couple times, which just surprised yeah. me. He's kind of got that salvy free swing in him, but. He's hitting for power right now. I keep calling him Jorge Soler light. Yeah, I mean, he came from about the Cubs, this, like... he's going to swing hard. He's got the power. When he connects, that ball's gone. But he when he doesn't an, connect, you're, uh... he said in an interview the other day that he wants to hit 30 home runs this year, which is a great personal goal. Like, that's one of the things that you have to tell yourself as a ball player. Um, I don't know if he's going to reach that, but have, the fact that he has that confidence in himself and is producing at the plate has yeah. saved guys like Renfro and Benny.
Well, yeah, all around. MJ Melendez has sailed. MJ Melendez has saved Vinny quite a bit, but like that's you true, get what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. All around, though, not a lot to complain about. First ten games, Royals on a six to four start, six and four start, big series against the Astros. Despite their what the Astros record shows, this is still a team that has been deep into postseason play year after year after year and have a very star-studded uh, lineup. Um, any other observations or things you want to throw out from the last week and a half? Uh, the last thing I want to throw out, and we don't spend a lot of time, is though I do love that, again, I have my issues with Q because I have my issues with the Rays. I do love that after Will Smith blew two games, that as soon as he was brought in to save the game, I think it was Friday night against the White Sox, immediately James McArthur was, was in the pen. Yeah. yeah. So that's great because that, that just shows you that this team wants to win. Will Smith's, Will Smith's response of being like, hey, Skip, I get it. That's what, like, that's what. I would have done too. Like we were trying to win like that. That's just another great thing to feel like even the guy that's struggling, but is also a leader and was brought in to to kind of change the culture is on board. Like there's just so many things like that's the one negative thing has been Will Smith in the bullpen. And there's still that big of a positive story coming out of it. So a lot of things. And and again, bullpen guys, I mean, it's, Though even the, even the best, they get rocked around, and a, and a guy that's a veteran like him, unless the wheels just look like they're falling off over the next two weeks, I think he, I think he'll bounce back. I I've always been I want to say I always the last couple of years have kind of changed my perspective on the bullpen. I I always loved the traditional seven eight nine. You know your role, so that way you're prepping for it all year. Right. Then you see some of these other teams start to just really dive into analytics, and it's like all right, we've got five guys that can close because we're looking at the matchup, we're looking at the guys coming up in the ninth, so we're gonna base our roles night by night. And I think sometimes that plays to their advantage. We've seen it with the Rays have done it in the past. The Braves have done it in the past and it's been successful. It's not always successful, but I think having options makes you feel comfortable. And right now it does feel like the Royals might have a couple guys that could potentially um, make that closer role um, yeah. more than just a every once in a while type of. I think Schreiber is the uh, fire stopper. I think Will Smith is uh, for the lefties in late games. MacArthur's the traditional closer slash highest leverage. And then Chris Stratton kind of fits in wherever, but depending on rest, you know, depending yeah. on who's pitching. And hey, Jordan Lyles kind of the, got, got the ninth inning once. So, you know, he's got it twice in both blowouts. Yeah, twice in in now, both yeah. blowouts, he's got yeah. the ninth. That's where so, he yeah, should So, yeah, when you got be. a nine run lead, you feel good with him there. And then, of course, Carlos Hernandez is, is not back from injury yet. So maybe he mixes in there and comes off of injury and looks solid. And they've still got a couple guys, I think, at the minor league level that could could play a part in there but yeah it's been it's been a pretty solid uh first week and a half um obviously plenty of baseball left to get into and you know would love to see this hot streak continue but yeah royals are on pace for 97 wins they keep it up they're winning the division baby oh man yeah the funds of early season baseball but the, the and i'm sure you know in six weeks from now or three weeks from now if they drop seven of 11 we'll be sitting here going oh my gosh this is the worst team in the american league central again I'm pretty, right everything's sure my kel's on pace for like 45 home runs if we if we want to do yeah that. if you want to go that stretch yeah <laughs> Yeah, that, I think we'll wrap up there. Again, we're going to try and give you some Royals updates weekly or bi-weekly, kind of give our takes and thoughts on on not just the team as a whole, but some of these individuals. I think baseball, as much as it is a giant team sport, it is fun to kind of break down the individuals and look at them. Um, because, again, you look at the Angels, you have a guy like Mike Trout who could have you know historically amazing season, but their franchise is so bad that it's all for naught, um, which is why a guy like Shohei Otani is no longer there. Right. Um, side stories but uh that's i think that's what's fun about baseball is you can look at the the whole picture and you can also analyze the guys individually and and see the connections but yeah we'll wrap up there um be sure you're checking us out on spotify thank you so much if you're listening over there if you're here on youtube of course hit that like and subscribe button below help other royals chiefs jayhawk fans find us we're starting to gain some more traction here on youtube got a lot of great guests lined up here over the next few weeks and months that will start breaking the news as those are officially confirmed and you don't want to miss out on any of those fantastic interviews so make sure you like and subscribe share it with a friend get a couple of your buddies to sign up and and, and uh help support us again we're on our way to 500 and we're getting so close and you guys could help us get there um, but yeah, that'll wrap it up for for now. He's Chris. I'm Keegan. You can check us out both over on Twitter. Chris is at 10 Penny 88. Always got some baseball stuff uh, at Keegan eight underscore 11 for myself. You know, we'll be talking all sorts of sports all the time. And of course you can hit us up at the podcast at KCSA pod, but that'll do it for this one. And until next time, guys, thank you. We'll catch you in the next episode.